and in a rumpled suit who looks like a, a kindly grandfather should ever win. Helena, don't worry about it. It's not happening here. People like me won't let it happen here. And there's something else you got to know, and this is so important to bring up right now. What is the difference between the middle class in America now and the people in Russia who were very poor and starving when Marx and Engels put out the Communist Manifesto? Well, there's a couple of things. One, there's no starvation in America. People have never been so fat and happy. That's number one. Number two, <clears throat> we have guns. They were not allowed to have guns. Now you understand why they have a glean in their eye to take away your weapons. Do you understand that the only thing that stands between them and absolute power is a disarmed America? Do you understand why the Second Amendment is the foundation of all of the other amendments? Do you finally understand why the left has a vendetta against the private ownership of weapons? You do know that old Castro took over Cuba because the people were, were had no weapons under Batista. Did you know that? They had not a weapon in their hands. You do know that the Muslims who slaughtered so many innocents in Paris, for example, did so because nobody in that dance hall had a weapon. In fact, the Paris police are unarmed. Did you know that? There's only a certain division of the police in Paris who are allowed to have weapons. And into that breach comes the Muslim who somehow finds a way to get weapons, whether it's in Paris or where. You forgot San Bernardino already? How did the two new immigrants, how did they wind up with Kalashnikovs? Where'd they get them from? Well, I'll let you figure it out. Just never, under, never forget one thing. The one thing that the left has been after is taking your weapons for obvious reasons. Don't give them up under any, any, any pressure. Back in a minute. Well, one thing is pretty sure after last night is that Hillary is really finished. I mean, whether she can steal the delegates is one thing. The people just don't like her. They just don't like her. The young people don't like her because they can see right through her, and they're taken in by uh, his rhetoric, the old man's rhetoric. And, you know, that's understandable in a way. They're ignorant. They have no education. They've been brainwashed into hearing about fairness their whole life without understanding how it will kill them. Uh, they don't understand any of that. She, of course, everyone knows, is, is she is tottering with the FBI investigation, which incidentally is not being conducted by the vast right-wing conspiracy. There's overtly a crime that occurred there with the emails. That's number one. I mean, put aside the, the uh, amount of money that she has raked in as a politician or that her husband has raked in as a politician. It's embarrassing. And for her to masquerade as a Democrat socialist is ludicrous. The funny part is, is that Hillary would more more aptly fit as a, as a Republican. If Hillary ran, ran as a Republican, she might stand a better chance of winning as a woman. Do you know that? Because she'd be in accord with who she actually is. Who is she fooling, in other words? They're extremely wealthy. They get away with paying as low taxes as possible. Their only friends are billionaires and trillionaires, or millionaires and billionaires, that's all. She's more naturally a Republican uh, than is John Kasich. John Kasich would be a better Democrat, by the way. So there's a little, uh, you know, party hopping going on here. So I think we've covered this. We can go on to other stuff. I really had wanted to get to the Zika virus today, but no one cares yet because it hasn't arrived in America to any extent. But if you actually heard Clinton's speech, your hair would stand up, the hatred that came out of her mouth. Here she is using class warfare, which has put a target on the back of every man in blue, every man and woman in blue, <clears throat> Listen to clip number 15 from Hillary Clinton, the race hater. African-American parents shouldn't have to worry that their children will be harassed, humiliated, even shot because of the color of their skin. Oh, how awful. Immigrant families shouldn't You're have disgusting. to lie awake at night listening for a knock on the door. You LGBT should. Americans shouldn't oh, be fired LGBT from their Americans. jobs because of who they are or who they love. When did they ever get fired for that? And let's finally deliver something long overdue. Yeah, equal all right. We heard it before. Yeah, she doesn't have equal pay. $650,000 for three speeches. She wants equal pay for women. How much hypocrisy can you take in one speech? Immigrants shouldn't have to lie awake at night listening for a knock at the door. Yes, they should. If they're here illegally, they should wait for the knock at the door. And they should be sent home to take care of the country that they fled where there is no welfare and food stamps, which we can't afford. Oh, they should lie awake waiting for a knock at the door, Mrs. Clinton. 
because there are many Americans going to sleep who really need a little help and they're not getting it from your friends in government. Like the veterans who are rotting in hallways in VA hospitals while immigrants are given gold-plated uh, immigration uh, treatment. You know that. Now here she is in, in clip 16 comparing herself to a humble nurse in number 16. This is just you know, my family even better. and my faith taught me a simple credo. Do all the good you can in all the ways you can for all the people you can. That's what called me to a life of service, just like millions of teachers and nurses and police officers and firefighters and members of our armed services who get up every day and do the quiet work, the heroic work for all the rest of us. So she's quiet and heroic now as she screams about her quietude and our heroism. Her family and her faith taught her a simple thing. To, well, that's what's going to life is just like millions of teachers and nurses. All right, you get the picture. We can point out their fallibilities uh, all day long. It won't matter. Here's a soundbite from the ice cream man himself, Marco Rubio. You can practically hear the bells of the good humor truck behind him in clip 17. Donald Trump's not going to be the Republican nominee, but New Hampshire's a state that's been badly hurt by, for example, losing jobs to China, the closing of mills, the loss of our manufacturing base, and Donald's really tapped into that. And I think that's an important topic, and it needs to be discussed, uh, without a doubt. But ultimately, to be president, you can't just go around telling people what's wrong. You have to tell people how you're going to fix it. Well, he did. When he becomes president, he'll spell it out for you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. So the topic is revolution comes to America, but here are some other headlines that you need, you need to know. First of all, the results of New Hampshire you can find anywhere, but they're important to, to state. Trump, 35%, Kasich, 16 Celia Cruz, a son, 12 Bushy, 11 Ice Cream, 11 and uh, Bridge, 7%. Carly Fiorina ended her 2016 bid. You know what? I respect her for that. At least she has the dignity to withdraw when she sees she can't win. I think some of the others ought to have the dignity of Carly Fiorina. Another headline, conservative leaders are opposing a call to require young women to register for the draft. Notice it's conservative leaders who are opposing a call to require young women to register for the draft. The Democrats want all of those little girls in blue uniforms with red stars. I wonder why. Meanwhile, the snake in the White House put out a budget which includes $750 million for a green climate fund. How many of that will go in the hands of senators' husbands and congresswomen's wives? We don't know, but the shadow may know. Pathetic, an activist criticizes the Trumbo movie for not being sufficiently pro-communist. The actor James Woods saying this. Why is Obama... Oh, James Woods is saying... Why is Obama spending money on junkies instead of Alzheimer's? He said, junkies made their choice to die. That's him, not me. Beyonce's Black Panther Super Bowl show. What is the message? According to Kim Holmes, the message is, it's cool to embrace violence. You get it? Okay, those are some of the other topics. Here's the idiot head of our intelligence in America, that baldy clapper. He says climate change could lead to a larger crisis. You hear this? This is running our intelligence under him. The idiot running all of our intelligence, this moron, is still yakking about climate change, not about the Islamic State. Could you believe this? Okay, what else do you want to talk about? It's all here, 855-400-7282. Let's take some calls. WJR, Detroit, Mark, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Thank you, doctor. Thank you for taking my call. I am from Poland. I escaped from Poland in 1982, and I was 31 years old man. I spent here 35 years, very successful here, and I cannot explain and express what is different to live in communism and free country, what they call America. It's unbelievable how people, they do not appreciate the freedom to live. No. Water. No, no, they, they think freedom is free. They don't understand what it's like to live under a, in a prison camp, which you, you escaped. Why do you think so many of America's college kids are cheering for this communist Sanders? Why do you think they're doing it? Free car, free iPad, and they can live for free. That is the problem. That is the problem. I do not understand how teaching and college teach kids in today's era 
what is America and what is the freedom. They only All right, Mark, listen, you're, you found the good show for yourself. This is the voice of America called the Savage Nation. It has been pounding out the truth for 21 straight years. And believe me, Mark, many emigres from the ex-Soviet Union listen to this show religiously because they hear a hope, a beacon of hope for themselves in a sea of lies. And I want to thank you for listening. I'll send you a copy of my book, Government Zero, for your friends. Going to the, um, the fascists, the Islamo-fascists, you may not know this, but Ramadi has been liberated. Ramadi was a town taken over by the Islamic State, right? Well, it's been liberated uh, w by Iraqi soldiers who did the job without, you know, our weapons and our help. Iraqi security forces have full control of the city of Ramadi and its outskirts. But you ready for the punchline? There are thousands, if not tens of thousands, of booby traps and IEDs and houses rigged to blow. It gets even worse. The enemy has actually rigged Qurans to blow up if touched. How's that for a holy book? How's that for using religion as a weapon? You didn't hear any of that at Harvard, did you? Warren, the spokesman for the U.S.-led coalition, said the Islamic State used a scorched earth style as they pulled out of Ramadi, and they left the place in ruins. But they lost, in other words. Congress is discussing a safe zone for persecuted Christians and Yazidis in Iraq, something I've suggested for over a year. Instead of letting the Iraqis come here, Instead of letting the Syrians come here, I said create a safe zone in Iraq, create a safe zone in Syria, fortify it with a wall, and put the darn useless UN around that wall to protect the people. Don't bring them here. Let them stay there in their own country. 855-400-7282. WABC, Tony, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Hi. Much like that uh, earlier caller who came from Poland, uh, what I was struck by last night in the communist speech was that he told everybody of his family immigrating from Poland, uh, the socialist Poland, and he came here to our free country with all our opportunities, and instead of, like that caller said, embracing the differences that this country presents, what he wants is to bring this country to be what his parents fled. You're 100% right. And you have to ask yourself, what has this old man in a crumpled suit ever produced that anyone bought? Answer, zero. What service has he ever provided? You know, he's never held a job his entire life. He's just been a, uh, well, shall I say a politician? A useless parasite, a lifer, a politician who's used racial hatred, class warfare, and look how far he's come. Think about how uh, hatred sells. And look at Bernie Sanders. He's one of the greatest salesmen of hatred America has ever seen. Children, but I have to believe that the children today are being or not being taught the differences between the communism and, and our form of government. And they have no idea what life in communist Russia will Of course they have no idea. How many of their professors know uh, what life in communist Russia was like? The professors are as dumb as the students. Yeah, and that's where they're getting all their information from. I have. Wrote. I understand. I know the problem. And I'm trying to resolve the problem by educating the American people with this daily radio show. It's that simple. Now, do you want to move on to something else? I don't know. Do you want to talk about the Zika virus? Do you want. Oh, I have an interesting list. I don't know if you're interested in it. That someone sent me about all of the people who were built by um, Madoff. Now, remember we were talking about Madoff last week? Uh, let's see if I can find this easily. It's not easy to find. I don't know what I, Jack sent it to me this morning. Jack, can you send it again? Uh, Ryan had to run out of the room. I don't have it. It's a great list of the, you won't believe some of the rich people and how much they lost, how they were taken in by Madoff. And the one thing I will say about Bernie Madoff is he wasn't a racist. He robbed Jewish people and Jewish institutions equally to uh, non-Jewish people. Now, one thing about Bernie Madoff, he was not a racist. He ripped off Christians, he ripped off Muslims, he ripped off Buddhists, I think a monastery he took down. He was not a racist. That's the one good thing about him. Did you guys get that this morning? I sent it to Ryan. I, I can't even put my finger on it. But it's an interesting story of the victims of Madoff, if you could find it. 855-400-7282. WFTL, Danny, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, how you doing? My... Um my my biggest concern is that I see I hear people talking about Bernie uh, as if you know oh socialism is never going to happen in this country and stuff like that and 